In this video, we're going to look at a couple of improvements we can make to this program, just using the syntax that we have already seen. So one problem is that we've got output statements, print statements, kind of sprinkled throughout the program. Now, incidentally, when we read text from the console that the user has entered, we say we're reading from standard in. And when we write text like this, we say we're writing to standard out. Standard in and standard out are, we call them input and output streams. They're kind of streams of data that deal with what happens on the console. We're writing to standard out here in multiple places. Supposing we wanted to change this program so that, for example, it wrote the output to a file instead of writing the output to standard out. Then we have to find all the print statements and change them. So it's not a good idea in general to sprinkle print statements throughout your program. Now, if I'm just writing a small program for myself, I generally won't worry about that at all. But if this was going to be quite a large program, let's say, or a program that I was distributing to other people, then I probably would think about what I could do. And one thing we can do is create a new variable here. Let's call it status. And I could set it initially equal to whatever the default value for status should be. So we could set it equal to fridge OK. We could say that's the default status of the fridge. But if we look at what the default clause is in this if block, the default is really fridge is broken. So we try all the other conditions first. And if none of them work out, we say the fridge is broken. So really, we could say here, fridge is broken like this. That's the default. And then we're going to check and see if anything else is true, which hopefully it is. And then we can change these print statements. So I can say status equals fridge is too cold. And I'm going to do that with all the others. So I'll just copy that to make it a bit easier. Let's paste these in and get rid of the trailing brackets now. And then finally, we can put the print statement just in one place. Here I can say print status. Let's see how that works. I'll run the program and enter the fridge temperature. Let's try seven. Fridge is broken. So it works as before, as you can see. But the advantage is now we've only got a print statement. We've only got some kind of output statement in one place. In general, in programming, we want to try to separate code that interacts with the user, what we call the user interface, with code that is just dealing with pure logic. You can stress about that too much in a small program, but in a larger program, that becomes an important principle. You try to keep the user interface code or code that interacts with the user separate from the other code as much as you can. In a large program, that code would be in its own set of files rather than being mixed up with the rest of the code. But I'm not going to adhere to that in this course particularly because we are going to be dealing with relatively small programs here. Even so, this is an improvement to have the printing to standard out just in one place. Another thing we could do is we could think about, well, what happens if, for example, we want to localize the program to a different locale? Like we want to write a version of the program in Spanish. Then we've got this problem, as before, that we've got strings in English sprinkled throughout the code. So we could create some constants to deal with that. Remember, a constant is just a variable that we don't intend to change. So it's not like temperature, where we assign a value to it, and then here we're assigning a different value to temperature. With a constant, we wouldn't do this. We wouldn't ever change the value of it. And to signal that it's constant, we give it uppercase letters. Now, to make it clear that these constants all belong to the same part of my program, that they all perform a similar function. Let's give them some kind of common prefix. So maybe F for fridge or S for status or something, or even status underscore like that. 
So let's say status underscore broken equals this. And then we'll have status OK. What else are we going to need here? We're going to need status cold and status warm. I think that's it. OK, cold, warm, broken. OK, so this is going to be set to this. I put spaces in, they're not necessary, but they do make it easier to read if you use kind of nice and consistent spacing. And status cold, so we set that equal to this. Status warm, we set that equal to this. Now here we can use status broken. And here, so there, we can use status cold. Then we've got status OK and status warm. So I put the names of these variables in uppercase letters to indicate that they should be held constant. They should be thought of as constants. And we've also got status broken down here at the moment, but we are going to fix that. So if we run this now, it's going to work just the same as before. But the advantage is we've got all the strings in one place, well, apart from this one, but at least we've got the strings that give fridge statuses all in one place. So they're easy to change. Now, if we look at this, this else isn't really doing anything useful anymore because status by default is set to status broken, right? So if we don't do any of these, it will still be set at status broken. So we can actually get rid of this and it will work just the same as before. Let's try it. So three, we get fridge OK, minus one, fridge is too cold. Let's try five, too warm, and seven, fridge is broken. So from a point of view of maintaining the code, this is something of an improvement, I would say. And if it seems more confusing, and even if it doesn't, it's worth typing it out, writing it out in this form yourself and checking that it does work for yourself. So as we go along, I want to give you some tips on how to structure your programs and you know what's considered best practice in software engineering and so on. But I won't always adhere to them just because we're often writing small demonstration programs here. And in a really big serious program, we could put these constants in their own file so that they really are all in one place. And there are other ways of dealing with them other than just setting constants to all of these values as well. But we'll look at that sort of thing later on. Hello, you've been watching a free sample from my Python and machine learning for complete beginners course. I'm uploading enough videos from the start of the course to get you started with Python and machine learning. The full course is absolutely massive. If you're interested in it, please click the link in the description. The complete course covers not only basic Python, but also some fairly advanced Python, even some desktop programming stuff, and then goes on to machine learning and artificial intelligence. Until next time, happy coding.